Welcome to our Sunshine Kitchen, Sunshine Foods. My name is Joy Fido and today I've got something really exciting for you as always. So, welcome on board. Okay, so what have I got for you today? We did promise you there's going to be a lot of cooking on this trip that we came for. And so far it's just been flowing. So today is a goosey soup, a goosey soup with bitter leaf. Bitter leaf is one of those leaves that's really underrated in Nigeria. And you know when we're so excited about sunshine foods, foods from Africa, foods from Nigeria, there is so much in that country that it's endless. And sometimes what we tend to do is we just stick to the one thing and forget that the other ones exist. There's so many leaves we are going to be showing you on this channel. Bitter leaf is just one of them. And just go and Google benefits of bitter leaf. You're going to find it's got so much for you health wise. So that's why we chose to show you bitter leaf today. So bitter leaf and egg is what it is. And I will show you our bitter leaf. Okay, so two things that are completely brand new to our ingredients today. I'll show you those things. And then I'll show you what are the main ingredients for this soup. So the main ingredient number one is the bitter leaf. We said a goosey with bitter leaf. So that's bitter leaf. Uh, unfortunately, being that we're here in Europe, we don't have the fresh leaf of it for you to see. But you can always Google bitter leaf and, and click on images and you see what they look like when they're on the ground. Um, next big thing is stockfish. Stockfish, we really wanted to bring in our video for you to see because it's just one of those fishes back home that is so, um, I'll say, highly, highly valued. Now, the thing with stockfish is just fish that's really, really dried. If you've heard about this dehydration process where most things are dry, things like beans are dehydrated rice i really can't say for sure but most things are dehydrated so they become dry and they become safe so i normally say three ways you can eat either the food has been dried or it's fresh or it's frozen and so this is dried now the way you prepare this is one of the big things we're going to be showing you today stockfish is really really dried again just like any fish it brings its own benefits great things you can get out of fish is what you get out of stockfish and so the next big thing for our soup now is the egusi itself so egusi we've done a egusi video before and i think in that video it was just all about meat 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 so today we're changing some ingredients and so um egusi is one of the main ones but it's something we've done before so the new thing like we said is the stockfish the bitter leaf and the next new thing coming in this video is fish so the next thing here is the fresh fish frozen fish and we just wanted to make it really interesting by getting really good sized fish so a good um say stock no stockfish bitter leaf and fresh fish are really the best of friends because bitter leaf has a hint of bitterness and fresh fish prefers something that's a bit bitter to enhance its taste so that's why the main focus was really fresh fish and that bitter leaf and then of course everything else was just to make it exciting and uh, you know appetizing and wonderful so fresh fish is here frozen fish we're going to defrost it we're going to de-skin it or descale it and then we're going to prepare the um stock fish for you to see how it's done the other ingredients which are now optional other ingredient optional is just the mixed meat um so this is the tripe or the shaki we call it and this is the um cow food it's called uh -huh. so this is just again to enhance the taste not necessarily an important part of it so that is going to go in so can you imagine how heavy this soup is already with protein and so the next things are scallop bonnet. now once you're cooking fresh fish 
you need a lot of stuff scott bonnet because you want it to spice it up and make it really what tasty and i mean eating otherwise especially for us africans or nigerians in particular we really can't eat something when there's no spice or heat in it so that pepper makes it really tasty so the next thing will be the onions the garlic the um, seasoning and then of course the spices to make the food taste really nice rosemary is one of our favorite and um, and that's it so we're gonna show you how we get the stockfish ready now okay so you wash your stockfish this is just to take away the dust from it because remember this is something that's dried and it just sits there in the shop besides that remember this stockfish they're very expensive really expensive just needed to bring that to your attention anyway so you wash it really well take away all the dust and then we kind of put it in the pressure pot and what i'm saying that is if you do not have pressure pot which is what we did back home you just suck this stockfish in hot water what they do they just boil hot water and drop the stockfish in the hot water sometimes you can suck it for like two nights if possible and what happens is the hot water softens it remember we said it's fully dehydrated so there's no amount of moisture in it at all and so it's all washed and it's in the pressure pot we tend to work with pressure pot a lot because it really does help so we've got all our beets and bulbs onions our seasoning um what's this scotch bonnet garlic and it's all going in there and we just blend that together just a little bit of water we'll blend it Okay, so you add water. Remember, you're using pressure cooker and stockfish is very dry. So it needs to soak up a lot of the water. So put as much water as you can. We'll just put that. What will happen is we'll check it. If we're not happy with the softness, we may add more water. So that is going to be blended and we're going to add it in there. Okay, so we're going to just add the meat to the stockfish. So as it helps us get this equally soft for the cooking now we're gonna blend all that um ingredients we put together pepper onions garlic and then we're gonna pour that into the sauce into the pot and pressurize it and cook it okay so you finish blending and you just pour in and that's it we're gonna cover this and start steaming okay so now i'm cleaning the fish you get it ready most times when you're buying fish they actually descale it for you um in our case i think we probably didn't really care we just wanted to get the fish and get up so make sure you defrost it because if it's not defrosted you won't be able to see that I mean, these are all the scale they are really really when the fish is really big the scale is big see that so when it's defrosted take your time and just kind of like pick them one at a time but most times if it hasn't been cut then you don't want to really push all of them in the wrong direction opposite direction and that's how the scale falls off but i i kind of prefer when it's cut because it's easier to just pick them one at a time the fish steaming now we'll just put the usual things spices herbs seasoning maggi garlic and just pour it on it i like it to steam okay so remember what a goosey is this is what we bought it as it says whole a goosey that's exactly the same thing as melon seeds we explained it in one of the videos earlier and people were surprised it's just melon seeds which is used in different ways by different people but we use it to make our soup or sauce so what I put in here is three bags of those little things I showed you and you wash it so I put it in one of these 
and I washed it so the water drains out immediately while cleaning the goosey. Why? Because most times when you see a goosey back home, it's just done in the open and then they just pile it there and then the dust comes and everything happens to it. So sometimes you hear the machine made and the handmade because they unpeel it and the process may not be that clean. So it's important you wash it unless you actually did the unpeeling yourself or the peeling. So once you've got it all washed, you put it in the blender. Still messy, messy, messy bits. So I'll wash a little more. Taking through whatever I find that I don't like. Now I just use that blender to blend other things. So I'm just using the same blender. It doesn't need to be washed. Okay, so we we've got the goose in the blender. Then we add all the other ingredients. Onions goes in, garlic goes in, um, a, a few spices or herbs goes in. As usual, I'm just to give it taste. Taste, taste, taste is important in the food we cook. And one natural base taste. Onions, scotch bonnet, three garlic, three big ones. Because we have garlic and everything else we've done there. It's just a little bit of rosemary. And just a little bit of butter. Now sometimes you might see the already blended ebusi. You can buy it if it makes life easy for you, but people stay away from it because sometimes you don't know what they've mixed and ground. They will call it the grind, they call it ground ebusi. So you don't know what they've ground in there to create that. There are dodgy people out there who will do anything for money. So they might just put whatever in there and you don't know. So that's why people prefer the whole ebusi so you can actually see what you're what you're going to use to cook. So we'll put that together. So we're going to put water in here now. So you allow good size water because this is going to be part of what you'll be cooking. You're going to cook it out from the sauce. So water in there. That was water in they are ready. Um, so we just close it and then we blend. Okay, so you got your palm oil ready. Remember, we're cooking it. You see, one of the things that go with it is palm oil. Shake, shake. And then you pour in your empty pot. So you put good size depending on the amount of a goosey you're going to be working with. And then you just pour your a goosey into it. Once the goosey is in it, you stir. So you're kind of like frying the ebusi. So now you allow this to cook. Remember we added water when we were blending it. So now you align that water to kind of like boil off so that you have your ebusi in there ready. Things you want to do it. So you stare, 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 and just allow it to cook. Okay, so after about five, I'll call it two minutes, open your pot, stare, stare. Now, the beauty of this particular pot I'm using is it's non stick, so it's not sticking. 
Most pots will stick a goosey. So if you can get like a non-stick pot, it will help. So again, just stir, stir, stir. Allow the water to still boil out a bit more before we start introducing our other ingredients. So what I'm gonna do, now this stock fish took us quite a bit of time to really get it right. Uh, sometimes you might get some that are a bit soft, that doesn't take too much to cook, and some that are really difficult. It took us about an hour, 30 minutes, about that. Another trick to stockfish too, if you want to save yourself time, is break into smaller pieces before you start your soaking or steaming as we were doing with the pressure cooker. So I'm just adding this to the agusi now, just for it to start picking the taste of the agusi. I'm not going to use the liquid yet or the sauce that came out of it. I'm still trying to dry my the goosey to really dry before I start adding other things. So you stir this in. You, what you find with starfish is you don't need too much to cook at a time because what happens as they soak the water, they become you know fuller and bigger. So a tiny piece of stockfish might just be okay if you don't want to put too much in your in your soup. Because remember it's dry, so it starts to soak the water, which is the science of food I keep talking about. Just think of what it is, just like how bean soaks the water, stockfish soaks the water, rice soaks the water. That's what's happening here. It gets it starts to grow as it absorbs the water. So we added it in there now to join in with the seasoning. So I'm going to add some seasoning in here to start making it pick up the taste quicker. And then I'll stir all that in. The good thing with starfish is it doesn't break easily in soup, so you have nothing to worry about. It's not like fresh fish that will start dropping little bits all over the place. Now I'll bring all the meat, but I'm not really trying to put the sauce in with just the meat itself. Let's stir that in as well. So it all connects and starts to soak in the goose itself as well. Now typically, especially with that stuffed fish and the fresh fish you're going to put, put in there, this is like a rich man's food. Stuffed fish is very expensive. But yes, it's good to sometimes put the best in your body. So now all of them need to cook together and blend in nicely. Maybe five minutes before you stir again. Okay, so now you can see how it's drying out. Now it's up to you how thick you want this to be. If you want it to be really thick, you can cook some more because the more you cook, the, the drier it becomes, the water starts to evaporate. But if you don't want that, you just want to fill a bit of soup to play with. You can now add whatever else needs to be added in and in our case we got the fish so now fresh fish is something that breaks easily in soup so when you add it you're not planning on stirring this food again 
you just put it in slowly one at a time. And let me soup touch it so it starts to simmer. this stage just so that this fish can blend in nicely you remember we really um, seasoned the fish really well when we steamed it so fish is really done but you just want it to pick up the taste of the juice. Be aware where you have your fish when you're stirring. You don't poke your spoon in it. And so the heat is lowered and now just let it simmer so the fish picks up the taste of the juicy. And once that's done, the next is the bitter leaf and that's our soup done. So by this time you're preparing what else you want to eat with it. So many choices. Um, you could eat it with pane yam, you could eat it with gari, you can eat it with rice. Some people eat their, their sauce with rice. Uh, semovita, semolina, just you name it. Typically back home they say your swallow. What swallow do you want? <laughs> so your swallow could be up to you. And now that's your lovely beautiful sauce simmering away. And I'll cover it and give you another nice three minutes for the fish to take the taste of the of the sauce. Okay guys, look at our beautiful, beautiful soup or sauce, depending on what you want to call it. Ready now for us to introduce our bitter leaf. Remember one time the other egusi we did was with spinach. So now this is bitter leaf. Like I said in the intro, there's so many other types of leaves that we're gonna be bringing. And um, all it does is just adds a bit of color again to the, you can see the yellowness of the egusi. And now it's gone slightly green. So you put it in and you just allow it to break down into the soup. Um, this particular one we bought was frozen. Uh, sometimes you get them dried, like same thing we we're saying about dehydration. Um, there's also something we call a kazi leaf, which most times you also see dry. Because when it involves transportation and moving it around dry is just the easier way but luckily we got this one frozen and then there's ugu leaf there's just so many types of leaves there's a dikai corn there's which is a mixture of the leaves there's afang again another mix african soup or nigerian soup is just so much it's endless so just stay tuned with us and you're going to be seeing a variety of these things. I mean, it's just one of those things we were talking about. It's We are just lucky to have such tradition because other people, there's just a few foods you can make. Especially here in England, most times it's just fish and chips. That's it. But for us, the choices are endless look at that so now remember when you had your fish and try not to break into them okay so once you've tried your best to stir it in nicely like that um 
as I give you like a minute to just blend into your sauce and then that's it because these leaves are already done anyway you know when you eat salads and all that you just know that you don't want leaves to overcook okay look at the beauty that this soup is it's ready to serve so now we're going to just prepare the things as we're going to eat with it and then we're going to serve it okay so there you have it it's all dished out now ready to eat everyone's really excited they just want to get on with it so the sooner i finish the better for everybody anyway so here is the pande yam and i played with it i had to think of something to just make it different this is just carrot my idea of being creative you can do anything you like with it to give you that color uh, i ran out of things to play with i could have put a leaf i could have put anything but that's the pan yam there with the soup just surrounding it so when we eat this any number of people can eat it dish a bit of the sauce dish a bit of the pan yam start eating here we have gary gary is here and the sauce is here and if you look where you can see the fish sitting there really well that's the fish that's the um shakio tribe that's the other the cow food um what else do we have the stock fish is just all over the place in the plate and here is with rice so again you have people who want to eat their sauce with rice and so that's the rice right there and that's the sauce like we said so many things can be eaten with this could have been some avita, some molina, um, there's um, uh, uh, apu, <laughs> which is cassava, so many things, amala. Again, all the swallows in Nigeria could be eaten with this soup. One of my favorite soup, but that's bitter leaf, with a goose, stuffed fish, fresh fish, pomo, um, well, not pomo, car food, and a track. Everything put in one. So I hope this has inspired you to start cooking. We like to hear from you. Show us pictures of what you've done and how it came out for you. Tell us how it tasted for you. We like to hear from you. Just just send us your messages like you've been doing. Tell us any other kind of soup that you like to know how to prepare. We'll be here to share them with you. We look forward to seeing you in our next video. Remember to like this video. Um, give us a thumbs up. Um, put that notification bell so whenever we do any video, you get them straight on. Follow us on all our various social media. Sunshine Foods got his own Instagram page. We're going to put these pictures there. And then he also comes up on Joy Fido on Facebook. So we look forward to seeing you. And as always, stay blessed. And we pray God to graciously, abundantly continue to give you what your heart desires.